skills and access to long-term affordable capital to empower our youth to create their own businesses and also to expand the private sector to create more jobs for Ghanaians. Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned in my budget speech, recent economic data suggests that the overall tax to GDP ratio for Sub-Saharan Africa in 2018 was 16.5%. The tax to GDP ratio for Ghana in 2019 was estimated to be 12.2%. Our tax to GDP ratio is lower than our peer countries in West Africa and significantly lower than many developed nations. South Africa, 26.7%, Senegal, 16.4%, Sub-Sahara average, 165 and Ghana, 12.2% in 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, these statistics are a poor reflection on the country and highlight the need to change the narrative. We cannot continue to depend on such a low tax base to generate adequate revenue, service, and reduce our debt to build our infrastructure, especially the roads, and to create needed jobs for our youth. The future is therefore one of sacrifice from all of us and burden sharing as a people with one language to transform our republic. Furthermore, out of about 18 million potential income taxpayers, only 2.4 million persons, approximately 8% of the total population, are registered as personal income taxpayers as of August 2021. Only 45,109 entities are registered as corporate taxpayers, while 54,364 persons are registered as self-employed taxpayers at the Ghana Revenue Authority. And there are about 17 million registered voters and about 19 million active mobile money accounts. In using the 17 million registered voters or the 19 million mobile money accounts as a proxy, for Ghanaians that are of adult age and economically active, and comparing to the 2.4 million Ghanaians who pay income taxes, we are confronted with the stark reality that the structure of our economy is quite informal, unlike the Western economies, and as such, the traditional tax handles, like the personal income tax, also known as PAE, may not be as effective in raising the required revenue. Ladies and gentlemen, we are determined to enhance domestic revenue mobilization. The essence of our proposal on the e-levy is to widen the task net and generate the required revenue to support entrepreneurship, youth employment, to build our infrastructure, especially roads, and reduce our debts. Permit me to emphasize that the e-levy represents our greatest opportunity to, in the medium term, broaden the tax base and meet the tax to GDP ratio of 20% as pertains among our peers. To lessen the impact of the e-levy on consumers and subscribers, especially the more vulnerable, we shall work with all stakeholders, including the techos, to ensure that we respond to the needs of the people. We shall also ensure that administrative measures will be taken to avoid attempts at evading the e-levy taxes. The proposed e-levy is largely progressive. We have intentionally set the Ghana CD100 threshold covering about 40% of Momo users, mindful of the need to exempt vulnerable groups while continuing to encourage the development of our nascent digital economy. This, to a very large extent, would ensure that a significant number of Ghanaians, low-income earners in the informal sector whose daily transactions fall below the 100 CD threshold are totally exempt from the payment of the e-levy. There are other issues that have been raised by the minority caucus and concerned citizens, such as increasing fuel prices, poor infrastructure, and insufficient job creation. We expect this budget to tackle all of these issues. The provision of the threshold demonstrates a caring government, the actions of a government that has since 2017 implemented some of the most innovative social intervention that this nation has ever seen. As you can see from the budget, various measures have been outlined. We'll continue to remain people-centered in our transformation agenda. Through the e-levy and other revenue financing sources we, were, we have established, we'll be establishing the unprecedented 10 billion youth start program, 
uh, vehicle to remove the fundamental impediment to the growth of enterprises in Ghana, access to capital. We'll also address the provision of the requisite skills for our young people to confidently start, manage, and expand their own businesses while expanding the private sector to create more jobs. Significantly overhaul the digital infrastructure on which the transactions occur. This is to increase the assurance and protection as well as security within the cyberspace. We will aggressively expand the digitization agenda to bring more convenience to Ghanaians, efforts to improve the delivery of health by digitizing records, supporting platforms for e-pharmacy, and improving birth certifications to newborns will be sustained with funding from this levy. And to expand road infrastructure, we are currently working with the Minister of Roads and Highways to finalize all the roads to be supported by the e-levy. We expect to publish this list by end of this year. Fellow Ghanaians, putting a levy on electronic transfer is undoubtedly a new and innovative way of raising revenue for this country that leapfrogs the lack of the typical infrastructure that is required to collect taxes via traditional means. This approach capitalizes on the new digital age that we find ourselves in today and the advent of e-money and proliferation of online transactions. Most of us today are just as comfortable ordering food online or clothes from a virtual shop as we are walking into a shop or a restaurant. We need to review our approach to tax collection to reflect this new reality. But of course, with all such new cutting edge and innovative initiatives, we do expect to encounter some challenges during the implementation stage as we humbly request that you all bear with us as we roll out this new way of revenue collection. We will also set up call centers to receive any complaints and all suggestions. In this consultation period, we expect to listen uh, more to such views and ensure that the mistakes that others have made are averted in Ghana. To protect the public purse, ladies and gentlemen, we have also heard increasing concern on the need to be efficient with public expenditure. As a government, we have demonstrated full commitment to protecting the public purse and using the funds through various revenue policies judiciously. But there's more to be done. In the 2022 budget, we have committed to consolidate our efforts through the following measures. The use of the Ghana Integrated Financial Management System in initiating and processing all requests will be strictly enforced. Additionally, GIFMIS will be retooled to enable potential contractors and suppliers to verify and confirm availability of funding for awards of contracts. All the items specified in approved MDA's procurement plans posted on the PPA website can be considered for procurement contracts and ensuring that MOUs and agreements that commit to the government of Ghana financially are first and foremost approved by the Minister for Finance. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, the full consequences of not passing a budget are serious. This would imply that from 1st January 2022, for government to continue work, we will need to obtain parliamentary approval to spend in advance of appropriation other than that, the entire government will have to shut down, which would mean, to name a few, no salaries for the almost 700,000 public sector workers, including nurses, doctors, teachers, personnel of the security services, no government services and other expenditures, including payment of contractors, uncertainties in the business environment, and pressure on the currency leading to currency depreciation. Furthermore, would have incurred devastating damage to our fiscal consolidation program, debt sustainability, and international capital markets credibility. Ladies and gentlemen, government is very committed to addressing the challenges we face as a nation and sustaining our recovery from the impact of the pandemic within our fiscal consolidation and debt sustainability. We have a very competent team managing the economy and the prospects are bright. I believe that this budget sets us on a path of irreversible transformation from dependence on the state to individual enterprise, from generation of job seekers to a generation of job creators, and from a place of inertia and uncertainty to enterprise, innovation, and progress for all. 
Let me express my deepest appreciation to Parliament for the continuous support we have received over the years. We will count on them for approval of the estimates and appropriation. We are also thankful to the Ghanaian people for their sustained interest in the process towards building our nation for today and the future. I would like to take this opportunity to send a congratulatory message to our industrious farmers and fisher folk for their tremendous contribution to the economy and development of the country. As you know, last year, the agri sector grew by 7.4%. We are truly grateful for your hard work in feeding this nation and delivering stable economy, muted inflation, and will continue to support you to achieve even greater feats. Let me also take this opportunity to congratulate the, the President as the Man of the Year in the Forbes magazine, continuing to show the beacon for Africa uh, and the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your attention, and God bless us all, and let us move uh, with courage, you know, with love, with self-discipline, and the good Lord will bless us and bless our nation, Ghana. Thank you very much. Thank you. Minister, thank you uh, for the statement. Um, colleagues, we'll do two quick things. Um, for the benefit of our colleagues who are broadcasting in three, in two minutes, I'll do a quick summary, uh, and then we'll take um, your questions. Please indulge me there. Um, but just to sum up, the Honorable Minister has mentioned about six major things. Number one is that, uh, pursuant to all the conversations that have been going on, he has formally written now to Parliament through the Speaker of Parliament, uh, communicating the modifications which he mentioned will be included in the um, budget as it was approved on Tuesday. You will notice that in that conversation there were about five things that had been mentioned by the minority, but this afternoon he's mentioned about seven things because we are consulting and engaging with a broad spectrum of stakeholders, the minority and other uh, stakeholders. So you notice about five of the issues raised by the minority and about two things. Uh, he spells out what government's position is on all of those ones. And then for the uh, electronic levy, he mentions the fact that the uh, engagements will continue. Um, he also talks about the inadequacies of our revenues generally to meet our very legitimate needs as a country and why, therefore, it's important that we work to raise some more revenue using the e-levy as a very innovative uh, tool there. He also makes the point that the most important policy proposal in this budget is this U-Start program. And it appears um, we all have moved away from the biggest problem which we are trying to solve, and we are all having a conversation on one revenue measure. But the biggest challenge we're facing as a country, which we've all been talking about, we saw you all running programs on it on your TVs, etc., is unemployment. And this budget spells out the most significant program to deal with it. And I think the Honorable Minister has spoken to that one. Again, the seventh item, expenditure rationalization, it wasn't part of the five issues that have been raised by the minority. But you notice that the five issues plus benchmark plus expenditure rationalization are the seven major issues that um, he's speaking to this afternoon. He's spoken about what to do uh, with it. And then he concludes by talking about the consequences of not passing the appropriations or estimates. Because we move from the approval of the policy we are now going to do estimates and appropriations, and it's important that we all rally behind the flag to achieve this. Um, from Tomo broadcast with three mono, Minister Achache Nyamabeye and Somudi Edikai, and the Minister, I told you to to say, we are trocrata for Parliament, we are trocrata for Parliament formally. As a crata, no, the whom any and someone a bride approve budget, no. Or can say you done it and you can crowd or budget now or you got two volume. Protocasm yes modifications. So that I had that parliament approval policy, you know. The speaker can say the budget is approved subject to Sir and Near Mano. And said if you beca any number out on Kuman, no man said, Sir near manu and trom fem by in the end the minister truck at the co parliament and on a um watch him was saying. It also mean in some 
And welcome to a promising week and to the polls. We are coming to you live from our studios in Kukum Limli on your digital terrestrial TV because we're free to on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. This afternoon, Finance Minister Ken Oforiata has been announcing some reliefs following agitations over the 2022 budget in the last few days. We have details of the reliefs for you on the polls. Also this afternoon, nationwide strike by commercial transport operators who are today protesting the high cost of petroleum products begin to bite hard as students miss examinations, appointments, botched and workers report late to work. We are live across the country as hundreds of commuters are left stranded with no means of transportation and also monitoring a meeting between the agitated car owners and presidents uh, uh, this afternoon for you. Plus, Minister for Agriculture, Dr. Fria Koto, tells the NPP government's achievements in agriculture adding resources allocated to the sector in the last five years of this government surpassed any other government since independence. We have excerpts of a tour of the northern region. My name is Aisha Prime. The pulse is brought to you by Global Communities, Digni Lu, Affordable Safe Sanitation. Remember, we're streaming live on YouTube and all our social media handles on Joy News on TV. Tweet at us with the hashtag The Pulse. My personal handle is at Danana Aisha. Please stay for details. <laughs> The finance minister, Ken Oforiata, has been briefing the media. He's been speaking on the controversial e-levy, which he says government will continue to negotiate with the minority for an agreement on the way forward. He's been speaking on the unemployment situation in the country as well. My colleague, Charles Nixon Yabua, with the business uh, desk, has uh, joined me in the studio to help us understand the input of what the finance minister has been saying. First, uh, Charles, let's understand where we are with this e-levy. There's been back and forth with this uh, e-levy, especially because people people want to know why this should be charged and whether uh, the economy would collapse if it is not charged. Uh, where are we now with the back and forth? Well, Aisha, I'm, I'm happy that the finance minister clearly have said that um, he has modified the budget and therefore they would do more stakeholder consultations. They will engage a minority on this electronic level. It's very important. Um, where we are currently, as we speak, as a country, uh, the e-levy comes as a necessary evil because we do not have money and we need to raise money. If you look at the gap between expenditure and revenue, it's quite huge. Therefore, we need certain measures, revenue, hardcore measures, to be able to bridge that gap. And the e-levy is, is one of them. So I'm happy that the uh, finance minister... All right, Charles. So I'm told that the finance minister is answering some questions. Let's go back to the information ministry and uh, listen to the finance minister. A lot of things. Compared to the seriousness with which we are given to e -levy. And then my second question is, it's good to know that we've made the revisions and we are making progress with the budget process. But given ministers' uh, association with the international communities, experience in the capital market and how volatile and sensitive it is, so we have gotten to this level where there was a lot of acrimony with huge implications on our, our capital market processes and the country's image. We have gotten to this level. Couldn't we have handled it in a way that it wouldn't have created the anxieties created among the international community for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. So what is the status of the tax exemptions bill? And then, um, Kwegu, are you ready? I'm coming to you. So what is the status of the tax exemptions bill, Minister? And was it possible to have foreseen what somebody's reaction could have been and uh, prevented um, any sort of acrimony? There were earlier two questions. So if the budget program works in accordance with plan, what will be the projected tax to GDP ratio at the end of the fiscal year? And secondly, 
have the reverse hours of the benchmark value has been included in the revenue estimates for this year. Thank you. Quick, let me come to you quickly and then we'll go to the All right, so the minister spoke about the 10 million cities earmarked for the feasibility studies um, on the Blekusu Pusta project. It says at least. At least 10 million cities. We know yeah. that what the minority concern is has to do with the project itself. Will this 10 million be enough to do the project, or this is just going to take your feasibility studies? And then on the on the score of eleven, the minority say they want zero percent. Today the Chamber of Telecoms spoke and they say they want zero point two five. No, they said one percent. Minority leader. Yes, yes. They've, 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 they've come back on it as, as we need to understand that the leader spoke on his own. And so Who is saying this? Sam George and then uh, Mutaka also had the The members say the leader spoke on his own. Yes. I see. Go ahead. So we also have I have this question about the eleven. Well, is the, is the government amenable to a certain reduction? And will they announce that reduction? And also on the ELD, the minority is raising concerns about some $40 million that have been allocated for some services, some collection. They are saying GRA or Bank of Ghana can do the tracking. It's 241 million cities. cities. Because the budget is in cities. In cities. Right. 241 yeah. million cities. Can the Bank of Ghana or the GRA do this? Do we need another external budget? Very well. So my question gets on the electronic transaction levy as well. So name, just, uh, my name is Etonam. I report for TV3 Go ahead, and 3FM. So um, we, we've heard that the e-levy has been reviewed somehow. We spoke to the Ghana Association of Bankers and they say that uh, bank transfers are exempt. We are also hearing that inward remittances are exempt. So this is like a normal tax. So it would be good for us to get details on whether or not in what remittances are exempt and whether bank transfers are exempt as well. We're also he hearing that um, um, the majority says it's now 1.5%, not 1.75%. The majority? Uh, it would be good. Yeah, the majority, I heard. Who from yes. the majority is saying this? Apeyo Martins. He said, he said that um, it's been reviewed from 1.75% to 1.5%. It will be good for us to get details on that. Uh, we'll be hearing stakeholders saying we are expecting 0.5%. This is, this is a new levy. Are we not already paying communication service tax? There are concerns that it's the same thing we are having to pay again. So it will be good for you to be responsible. Okay. So, Minister, um, will 10 million Ghana cities be enough to complete the, um, the Kosu project? By the way, Minister mentioned at least 10 million to commence feasibility. Uh, works. And then uh, there's a question about the um, e-levy, um, whether it's 1% or 0% or how we reconcile the two. And then there's a question about um, what is the 241 million Ghana cities programmed in the budget as um, e-levy related expenditure, what is it for? Uh, because there's a claim that it is for the services of a private company to, to do that. So some clarification will be helpful. Um, yes, Minister, where are your hands? Thank you very much indeed, and, and thanks for the questions. Um, uh, I think the, um, one of the first questions was um, the expectation really is that um, with this new um, tax measures that we have, uh, we actually uh, will be able to move to um, just around 16. Um, to 16.5 percent moving towards uh, 20. Um, so we are really excited uh, about that and it just really goes to uh, amplify the need uh, for all of us to participate uh, in, the, um, in the payment of taxes um, so that the burden uh, is shared. Um, and that really is excitement uh, about going digital and using the new elect electronic modes um, to do this. Um, yes, the, the, the benchmark um, issues were incorporated um, in, in the fiscals as we have them. Um, E-Levy in terms of um, having alternatives, I, I think that's something that we need to get clear. Um, we have um, this triple helix of um, um, unemployment, uh, which is really quite debilitating if you look at the numbers. Uh, and then we have our debt, 
um, that we need to take care of to reduce our interest costs, but really to also uh, be able to mobilize resources internally. And so we are not subject to all of these foreign exchange risks, and we can plan much better. Uh, and then all, for all of, course, all of us, of course, rail against the issue of infrastructure, especially roads to open up our country. Um, but the record of who is paying for this, for the 30.8 million, is quite abysmal. Um, so the nature of the e-levy itself, um, uh, gentlemen, enables all of us to be roped in and to understand the sacrifices that we have to do if we want to move um, to a nation um, with a commitment um, to transform ourselves and break the back um, of, of these problems that we have inherited. And just a new dawn and a new beginning um, to go forward. But that is not to say that uh, the areas of inefficiencies must not be closed. And that there's a commitment to that. Uh, and so the tax exemption bill we are expecting to pass um, in the sitting of the eighth parliament, uh, the fees and charges bill also, we expect that um, to happen. Um, and so all of that then goes to reduce, you know, sort of the volatility and the uncertainty on our revenues, and we can plan and do things better uh, with everybody contributing their quota um, to this. Um, so philosophically, uh, we also, as I mentioned, um, have realized, you have realized, um, the way in which the nature of commerce is going. And therefore, tax handles are going to change, and we better move into that regime now and begin to understand the issues around them and perfect it as we move forward. And there's no better time um, than now. Uh, I think it's been unfortunate uh, with regards to um, the responses and what has occurred in Parliament, uh, increasing sort of the volatility um, in the marketplace and the widening of our spreads in the international capital markets. Yes, it could have been done differently. And um, as I mentioned um, today, under the instructions of the president, um, I sent a letter to the speaker uh, on the modifications that are required uh, for us to, to move forward in harmony. Um, so of the five areas, um, that uh, the minority have brought to bear. And what we have also heard in the public, uh, we, we, we sought to address um, at least four out of the five. Uh, and the real um, issue of the e-levy um, to really continue um, with the consultation and see how uh, we can find a way to come to, to, to redress. Uh, but as we mentioned, you know, typically one does not um, reject the policy orientation um, of, of the government, but you go into consideration and committees, and that is where the appropriate changes are made. Um, so we pray um, that um, the, as I sought consensus uh, from November 26th, um, that successfully um, on November 30th, um, this would lead um, to the House sitting the estimates being looked at um, so that we will meet the December 17th deadline when Parliament is rising to avoid uh, the untold uh, hardships that may occur. Um, so it's unfortunate, but you know, uh, in the life of a country, all of these things are uh, experiences that we learn, and the public then become a good judge um, for uh, the politicians in terms of um, how to manage um, situations of, of this nature. I think the, the, the issue of uh, Keta, Ketu South, and Anloga um, is quite clear with us, um, and therefore the humanitarian issues will be taken care of. Uh, but there's a need um, really to sort of conclude um, uh, a thorough feasibility study on it. You know, in reality, we have about 540 uh, kilometers of coastline, uh, and between Aflao and Prom Prom is about 150, 149 uh, kilometers that we have. Um, in sitting in this chair, in this office, I have seen um, 
sea defense projects, you know, somewhere between three and uh, 500 uh, million CDs um, for, let's say, five kilometers um, of, of sea defense. Uh, and I imagine that through the 544, uh, let's say 100, if you want to be simple about it, that then results in what? Maybe 40 or 50 billion uh, US dollars. So there's a real need for us um, to also really dig deep into understanding uh, the type of technology that we need to use uh, to make sure that we protect um, the coastline. Um, so I think there's an added agency um, to do that and to review uh, the course of any such project. Uh, but in terms of what we have to do immediately, I think that is going to be taken care of and um, we are very committed um, to, to, to that. 241 million, 241 million, um, 241 million for, um, for the establishment or the facilitation of the e-levy. Is that the question? Yeah, the question is, there's right. a 241 million in the budget. What is it for? Okay. Uh, thank you very much for, the, for that question. Um, you know, typically, well, not typically, uh, we do have um, uh, an understanding of GRA, uh, which uses approximately 3% um, or so um, of the money it raises um, for ensuring that they can make um, such collections. Um, so truly, this 244-41 million, um, it's uh, reserves that we intended to put aside um, to facilitate um, GRA's um, collection um, of these resources. Now it will be up to GRA um, to find the means uh, in which uh, they would ensure that with this new tax handle uh, that um, they have never experienced, they will use their own resources, um, they will use um, the, the current common platform uh, engage whoever they think is appropriate um, to ensure um, that um, um, this works because this has to work. Um, it's our expectation um, that um, because of systems that they have already, that may not be required. In addition, typically um, when we have um, new tax measures, uh, there's an issue of refunds and we usually make um, um, some compensation um, for that, uh, maybe sometimes 6% or so uh, of the value to ensure that if those refunds come, we are able to pay for them. Um, so in essence, this really will be to back up um, GRA uh, in the way uh, in which we ensure that all of the problems um, that people envisage and the difficulties other countries have had, um, we should be ready um, to support that. There's no um, agreement um, with anybody um, at GRA or Ministry of Finance as to a service provider for this, but uh, quite a number of, of local Ghanaian companies who helped us with Ghana.gov, you know, have been uh, approached um, to look at this problem to ensure that um, we we establish it, you know, a lot more firmly, and we do not lose uh, resources in that. Um, so we hope that GRS platform that they have already um, they make this um, quite superfluous in the in the long run. Mr. Yes, there are two final questions. Is it true that the e-levy has actually been reviewed? And can you give any details if it's true? You've mentioned that it's a subject of further negotiation. Yeah. The Tetonam says she's hearing that it's been is it true and if there are dead details? And then finally, there was another question of reduction that you asked. Right, so the, the concern is that we are, it's now at the exemptions. So if one remittance is exempted, bank transfer is exempted, so it's not a mobile tax. So if it's a mobile tax, you're already paying communication service tax. And your concern is that this is another tax in a, another shape or form. Okay, so the question is, is it true that it's been reviewed? And if it has, what are the details? And then there's a claim that it is... Um, or it amounts to double taxation because there are some other elements of tax that look like this. Quick comments on these two. 
Great. I, mean, come back. I, know. Yeah, I think that the, the, one of the questions that we need to face as a country is that are we paying enough taxes? And is everybody paying taxes? So this is a fiscal measure to try and answer those issues and also ensure that we tackle the youth unemployment problem with more revenue, that we look at our debt issues and reverse where we are. And then thirdly, that we also look at our infrastructure in a way. So that is not, you know, and then the issue of everybody participating at this juncture in our life as a nation as to how to move forward. Okay, that, that's, um, so, so that really should be the fundamental issue. Will this enable us to meet these um, demands that we as a nation uh, need to tackle? Now, that's a tax measure. Okay. Um, I think the issue for us is, as I mentioned in my letter to the speaker, um, the fiscal implications um, of the e-levy are very clear to us as to how we get these resources to do the work that I have mentioned. Uh, and so the consultations uh, are still going on with stakeholders, you know, widely uh, to find means uh, in which um, we can agree, uh, we can look at the fiscals, uh, ensure that um, the 7.4 percent deficit is attainable, that by 2024 we are back to the FRA of 5 percent, etc., and that our debt levels are going down. So it's not an inconsequential decision, uh, and um, we continue uh, really with urgency uh, to make sure that we get back to to stakeholders and minority caucus, you know, in the shortest possible time. Um, with regards to um, the minority moving from zero to one percent, etc., I'm not. I'm not. I can't say much about that. Sorry, so just, just a bit of clarity. So as it stands, the E-Levy is still 1.75. The E-Levy is still 1.75. The e is still 1 .75. We are in serious consultations right. and keeping clear about the fiscal implications of what it will mean. And then the coverage, so bank transfers are covered and um, inward remit taxes are covered. All that yes. has not been reviewed. I think, okay. as Minister has mentioned, yeah, yeah, no, I'm giving you the clarity. As Minister has mentioned, it is a matter that is at large for negotiations. I think it will help those discussions in the broader public education if we don't begin taking some fixed positions um, on it. The Minister has mentioned that it's, it's a 1.75. We've heard things in the public domain about 0.5, 1%, etc. But let them finish their conversations on it, and then we can have some definite matters. The last batch of questions, at this time I'll expand to about six, and then we'll wrap up. I want to take a quick hold on, because I've heard from you earlier. Let me take those who haven't spoken, and if I have an excess, I'll come to you. There are two at the back who haven't spoken. Then there's a call here, three, four, five. That's fine, that right? Five. Is there a sixth else? I'll go to Kweko and give him the sixth. Kweko, so I'll give you the last word as a sixth. So let's start from, from this end. And let's be snappy, please. Good afternoon, Minister. Uh, my name is Joshua from GNOT. Uh, so given the, um, going back to the e-levy, um, how long do you think it's going to take for, how long do you think it's going to take for it to be passed um, in terms of the acceptance given the um, restraints from the minority and also um, our stakeholders in terms of the consensus building on this particular topic, on the e -levy. how long do you think it's going to take, given that approaching bill is supposed to be passed before the end of the year? So, Mr. are you hopeful that the, the conversations on the e -levy will be concluded before appropriations is passed? Um, good uh, my question has to do with the E-Levy. Um, they are concerned that... You don't like you start. you like E-Levy. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead, I'm just kidding. Okay. So they are concerned that um, government agencies, and things like that, government agencies, which uh, use more as a means of payment, uh, would also fall within the tax. And that would essentially be government tax in itself. So whatever you accept exemptions, make it uh, made for these payments. Payment for government services. No, government agencies, let's say, uh, leave and those kind of things. Uh, those are government services. Yes, yeah. Government tax itself, 
Yeah. So will payment for government services be included in this? Yes, sir. And then there were final four. Yeah, let's start with the call. A call. Yeah. Let's get the microphone to the call, please. So are you optimistic that the conversation on E-Levy will be concluded before appropriation is passed? Uh, will E-Levy apply to government services or payment for government services? Yes, I call. Yeah, thank you. Um, Minister, we noticed that for the first time in the budget presentation, you mentioned a deficit figure that includes legacy debts. Does it mean that moving forward, we're going to have a one deficit figure? And why that decision? Because it was not so in the past. And on the, in the, the paragraphs you, you altered in your modifications, in Japan and Eka, we don't have the benefit of the, of the contract, uh, the agreements yet. Can you give, point, give us pointers? What exactly has changed in those graphs? And I'll go, please let's take the second question again. In the modification, yes. you mentioned that you altered a graph of, or so in the Japan. No, 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 no. A, paragraph, right. a paragraph in the Ijapa and then the Eka deal. I'm saying that we don't have the benefit of that document here. So if you could point us to what exactly that means. No, it was quite clear. It says it will be amended to take out the reference to mineral royalties collateralization. It's clear here. So it's a sentence that it is going to take out. Yes. Okay, so that is the discomfort of those who have raised it. So that will be taken out. Thank you. And then on the other matter as well, uh, we've always talked about deficits if you include um, uh, uh, energy sector, et cetera, and if you exclude them. So it's not the first time. No, usually, usually when the government presents the statement, the budget statement, we have that usually the footnotes. Yeah. But for fiscal years, the government really will present, and then, for example, this year we're looking at 9.4. And so your question is, are we going to get to a point where it will no longer be in the footnote? Where the, the, the recorded figure of deficit is encapsulated almost Automatic. Yes, so there's and nothing asking, to report in the footnotes. No, you're asking, so what is the thinking that went into that different trajectory that we are embarking upon? Mm -hmm. And maybe finally I ask, you want Ghanaians to sacrifice, we are sacrificing. Today there was a strike by transport unions asking for reductions. So the average Ghanaian is really already sacrificing. Can we really bear this? Are you not killing these same groups that you deserve that will lay the road in eggs? Thanks. And then I'll take a final two. Um, yeah, the gentleman and then. Yeah, my name is Emmanuel. I'm with GH1 TV. Um, the energy is here, among the among other things, to do with infrastructure, infrastructure unemployment, and then 10 billion Ghana CDT stuff. Of the 1.75%, I'd like to ask how much of that amount goes into you stuff? And then, secondly, Minister respectfully mentioned expenditure rationalization. I'd like to think of it in using our expenditure uh, estimates. So the question is, are we going to delay some government spending until 2023 or 2024, or we are looking at reducing the estimated at times? Thank you very much. Thanks, Lake Ghanaian Times. My question is on the road to the road to form part of government revenue mobilization or projection for 2021. Now that it has been aggregated, how much is it going to affect our revenue projection for 2021? No, no, I mean 2021. It means, it means in the last six weeks of yes. the year, how much are we going to lose? impact is it and whether or not it's significant? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Quego. Right, so, final one on the, on the conversations around the, 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 the strike today by transport workers. They said they want five taxes removed from the price of that. The government made them proud to the presentation of the budget and said it will be captured in the budget. We have nothing was mentioned of it in the budget. What exactly is going to be captured in the budget? According to the transport ministry, when they met the, the, the transport unions. And then on the second question about the. This is apart from the zero rating of the two out of the five taxes you made. Right. See, they said they want five taxes removed. Yes, and two of them have been zero rated. Zero rated. Right. Yeah. So, so you are rate. saying that. Um, Apart from that, they are they are they asking, can they hear about the other three? The other three That's the question. Yeah. Okay. And then on government services, the fees and charges going up by by fifteen percent, and then subject to annual inflation review. That's also upset us. That is also killer. And I didn't say anything. It's the government doing anything about that particular aspect of the budget. Thank you. But the fees and charges bill hasn't even gone to parliament. Yeah. 
Okay. And I get, I mean, like, um, I guess part of what Minister is saying in his earlier statement is that there are things that, apart from the policy, you now come with the specific measures during which period you can have the specific conversations uh, about those ones. Minister, where you ask first, final back. All right. Um, thank you very much indeed um, um, for this. Um, I think Joshua um, talked about the consensus building. And, and that's really sort of an important attribute um, of our society, and that's our sociology. Um, and we have done that successfully um, uh, since 2017. Um, so it's quite unsettling um, where we are today. Uh, but, you know, given that we've been able to accommodate um, four out of the five and actually done a bit more on other issues, I, I'm, I'm confident um, that we should be able to come to a consensus um, and be able to have the House rise uh, at the right time on, on December 17th. Um, so that's uh, my prayer uh, to the good nature of ourselves. And what we've gone through these 10 days, um, I guess, would enable all of us to calm down and see the greater good um, of the country. Um, E-Levy government services, um, really government services um, will look, in terms of government tax in itself, that would be exempted from that. Um, Mr. Minister of State, that's correct, is that right? Government services yes, will not be taxed on itself. So that's, that's that. Um, uh, then I call raised, you know, some fundamental uh, issues that uh, Minister of Information has answered. Um, but but I, I think for, for, for the narrative and the conversation, uh, we are not, um, as a country, uh, an island. And, and I call, I, I suppose, uh, when you read, um, you would know the issue of global supply chains and its effect globally and therefore its impact on inflation. Um, you would know the issue of fuel and OPEC stands and America even having to release its reserves, all of that. Uh, and then you know an imp our import content um, as a people with regards to importation of about $2 billion worth of food and flowers and toothpicks and all of that stuff. Um, and then you know who pays taxes and who doesn't pay taxes. So those are questions that we ask ourselves as to what type of austerity do we need uh, to be able to break through um, this um, colossus uh, of debt, of unemployment, and of infrastructure. And what is it the nation has to do at this point in time to be able to get through? Uh, I think if you look at the past two years and the type of, um, the extent to which the government went to make sure the lives and livelihoods were safe, and if you look at social interventions uh, since 2017 uh, with regards to um, senior high school, with regards to uh, national health, with regards to the LEAP program, uh, with regards to free water and whatever. You, you can't pretend that nothing has happened. I think we've done the most roads also uh, in the period than any other government. Um, so we, we need to confront that and say, how do we now all participate in this burden sharing to go forward? because we can do it. And the charge now is we are at this junction, uh, we are a people of great resolve, uh, we are the black star. What is it that we have to do, lock hands together, circle the wagons, and say that we'll break this helix? And that's a conversation that we should be having around. If you look at um, the youth, and whose child should not be working? And what is the indignity of staying at home, and what is the cost uh, to that person. So an intervention of 10 billion CDs, uh, which is historic, never been done before, you know, uh, with that type of uh, impact that senior high school is also having. You know, it's gonna change the way in which dynamism, innovation, self-confidence 
people come to our country. And we want those legs to be moving. Um, so 0.25% of the levy is almost equivalent to a billion CDs, which we have committed um, to do the next three years um, to make sure that the issue of access to capital, training, uh, and um, technology are available for people to be entrepreneurs as we build an entrepreneur nation. But even if not, not everyone can be an entrepreneur, private sector with more resources will expand to be able to absorb uh, more people. And that really, I think for me, the Youth Start program is what gets our common humanity in place and to think for the reason for the sacrifices that we have to do to move to the next level of middle or high income country. And that's just the reality of facing the world that we are in and we as a people saying there's nothing to fear but fear itself. And let us go for high achievement um, so that we can really break through um, this perennial problem. Um, so that's how um, I look at it and the old talk about, um, you know, um, yeah, breaking the golden egg and all of that. It's very, very emotive, you know, but truly uh, to get social mobility, there has to be a way in which we found a way to educate people, uh, which some other party said was impossible, and we did that in the same way in which we are bringing this 10 billion intervention uh, to make it possible uh, to see a different world uh, for our people. Uh, and so the Youth Start program um, is, is, is a game changer for the country in terms of an entrepreneur, sustainable entrepreneurial nation. And that's where uh, we should go um, as, as a people. Um, so very excited about that. Looking forward, you know, to an engaged society um, that would um, really herald um, this new beginning that we are talking about. Um, Mr. Minister, I'm not sure what the role to program. Yeah, yes. a significant effect. I think it was about maybe 74 million CDs a the whole year. Yeah. For the whole year. So, Six weeks. my old arithmetic will <laughs> bring it. Yeah. So, that's what, but, but really, in terms of the question will become the opportunity cost, you know, and um, we are talking about. Um, seven billion dollar CDs um, for e levy, and um, so you, you begin to sometimes ask the question: Why was somebody asking about a seven million CD problem when we have this gargantuan issue of moving the nation ahead and with that? And and the issue of the road tolls, I think there were some things which really were quite pernicious. The issue of pollution. Um, and, and, and just the, the hassle of, of sitting in a trotro, sweating, and being in traffic for that long. I mean, that's not the way to get to work, you know. Uh, so for us, uh, I think eliminating that and looking then into the future um, for these PPPs, which are then real highways, um, to then tell them, uh, we think will be uh, of more impact and effect uh, than what, what we have there. Um, so that's, that, that will be the reason, and that really is the cost um, to, 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 to us. Um, Mr. Minister, were there some others? Yeah, there was a final question on the, does expenditure rationalization mean that uh, some things are going to be cut or things are going to be deferred? Yeah. No, I, I think we, we laid out um, some of the issues in terms of um, um, intense application of com uh, expenditure commitments and the value for money issues um, and how we have to make sure uh, that the pricing um, of um, government services um, appropriate uh, projects that are brought uh, to us are looked at, you know. Uh, and then times for finishing projects, etc., and that you don't bring third-party projects to ministries, and if it's not uh, on the government's platform, uh, it just can't happen. Um, so you, the contractor, should be aware that when you go and somebody gives you a contract, a check on the website, whether it is actually part of anything at all, 
because it just wouldn't have the resources um, for that. I think that would bring some sanity um, to that and um, looking at things like sea defense and reevaluating, you know, what type of pricing um, should occur um, with, with projects like that uh, would also be, be looked at. Mr. Final Words. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a meeting later this afternoon, so uh, I guess I'll be briefed on, on that, on um, exactly, you know, what the impact is and, and what it means, and, and the conversations about uh, world fuel prices and what the build-up, etc. Uh, to see what we we can we can do, yeah, um, yeah. So uh, the, 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 this really and thank you very much um, for for coming and, and listening um, to us. Um, but it was really an attempt to um, let the nation know that um, it's been a difficult uh, ten days since. Um, uh, we went to Parliament to, to read the budget, um, and a number of concerns have been raised uh, by uh, the public uh, and the minority. Uh, we have, as I mentioned, sent a letter um, to the Speaker modi for modifications uh, for about 80% of what um, they had sought and, um, and what other stakeholders had also brought in. Um, the issue of E-Levy, um, I believe, uh, really hinges on the fiscals uh, and exactly what impact um, any changes will have on that. Um, but I, I think we'll come a closer resolution um, by talking to stakeholders and ourselves uh, and determining which direction that we can go. But we also assert that in the considerations and in the committees, um, these things can be resolved, um, but we will, as soon as possible, um, be able to come um, to Parliament um, of, of an agreement, I believe, um, so that December 7th, 17th, um, Parliament can rise. Uh, but, but I think one thing we should not lose sight of, and Minister mentioned it, is really this intervention um, on the Youth Start program. The whole issue, if you look at each district or if you look at each constituency, um, and you see uh, our youth um, um, not employed, uh, and to come up with this historic intervention um, that we all should look um, to support and raise with the same enthusiasm uh, in which we did for senior high school. Uh, it's a real game changer. Let's see it as that. Let's be the children of Isaka to be able to read the times um, that we are in uh, and understand the issue of sacrifice, the issue of burden sharing, the issue of all of us paying these taxes and so that the back of debt, the back of unemployment, uh, and the back of infrastructure uh, will be broken. And I'm sure uh, we, the good people of Ghana, uh, the Black Star, will be able to do that. So I am excited about the future. I'm confident that we can get to a consensus uh, that will meet uh, everybody's needs and uh, Parliament will be able to do its work. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Honourable well, Minister, grateful colleagues, thank you uh, for your time and uh, we look forward to you um, informing the country that the Minister has written to Parliament communicating the modifications and the details of uh, those. Thank you very much. You heard the Finance Minister Ken Oforiata briefing the media on some of the uh, issues that have been raised since the 2020 budget was read and approved and uh, the issues that people want to be addressed, including the e-levy and also uh, the uh, company that will be brought in to collect the levy or to manage this e-levy. He's been talking about uh, the fact that we are paying too much interest on our loans as a country. And the question remains, why are we uh, there or why is it so? He's also been talking about amending paragraph 442 and 443 to take out the Japa royalties. Remember, that has also been controversial. CSOs have been calling on government to make sure it doesn't come back. A minority in parliament 
has also been warning that they do not want it back. So the minister says uh, something will be done about it so that it doesn't go back. He's been talking about the GDP ratio of 12.2%, which he says is lower than our peers. And, of course, what are our peers, what's the situation elsewhere is something we'll be talking about. And he's been talking about the intervention of the Youth Start Programme, which he says is a game changer. Charles Nixon, uh, before we went there, you were talking about the state of the economy and trying to explain to us whether we, we really need this e-levy to make our economy work. Well, I've always said uh, from the beginning that uh, we have issues, and the issue has to do with our fiscals and financing. If you've been tracking uh, government, uh, treasury bill sales, bonds, you could tell that uh, we, we, we are really struggling, and mm. uh, we need to take an action, and the action e-levy is one of them. But for me, uh, the question is, was there any broader consultations? Mm. That, that, that is where we should ask ourselves. That has been established. There, were, you know, there was no consultation. Exactly. So if you that is where the... ESA, yes. If you listen to some of the uh, economists... Exactly. And all the stakeholders, I mean, on this, uh, in this area, then you realize that there was no consultation. So, so, so it means uh, there is a, pro a fundamental problem because I felt that there could have been a broader stakeholder uh, uh, consultation that would have, you know, addressed uh, these uh, buhaha, uh, that I'll call it. For instance, if you listen to the Institute of Economic Affairs, ISE and Co., they are proposing one percentage point rate, which relatively it is better. And the issue about discrimina discrimination, because we know that the e level would primarily be uh, it, it's Momo that primarily is going to be affected by the e-levy. Mm. There are other electronic transactions that will not be affected. Mm. But my, 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 my issue is, if you look at the number of Ghanaians who undertake Momo, mm. clearly majority are in the middle and lower bracket. Mm. Fine, the government argues that 30% uh, are rather in that bracket. Mm. They have to prove it. You need to prove it and show that these are the numbers because for us researchers we believe that before you make a decision you must back it with quantitative and qualitative mm. you know result and that would make your case stand out okay. and that is where the challenge interestingly is. the finance minister hasn't still announced any uh, resolve to this issue he says they will still continue to engage the minority in parliament to uh, come to a consensus that is brilliant uh, of course but that's not what Ghanaians want to hear Ghanaians want if a finality to this issue, the back and forth of the e-levy. But there's also this interesting point that he raised about we paying too much interest on our loans. But why is this so? That, that is an interesting point because I have always been arguing that uh, if, you, if you look at the amount of monies we've borrowed or the loans we've contracted over a period of about four and a half years, it beats my imagination because if you are, if you are, if, you, if, if let's say you are a company and you borrow too much, it will get to a time the bank that you would be going for a facility from will deny you mm. of the facility because on your balance sheet, you could tell that your current liabilities are so much that it's very difficult for you to be able to take care of the repayment. And that is where there is a problem. Um, for me, the challenge in the economy has to do with fiscals and finances. So how do we address the challenges? Mm. On the revenue side, mm -hmm. there had been a lot of research or theses that we have cited some. There are a lot of loopholes in the system. For instance, the tax exemption uh, bill must be passed because about 5 billion cities is lost to tax exemption. Mm -hmm. And that is huge. That money can you know take care of some expenditure you get you get the point yes. i'm making there is also the issue of our transfer pricing okay. and the declaring of invoice invoicing these are matters that must be addressed must be looked at holistically mm. so for instance the finance minister talk about an agency that will be established to help with the collection of the e-levy exactly but that my, has been my argument again is that the revenue assurance 
mm. and compliance enforcement unit established at the ministry to help to mobilize revenue. What has what happened to has, it? Exactly. Mm. So a lot of market watchers, analysts will say that it's just on paper. Mm -hmm. We are not seeing actualization. Mm. So that is where the, the, the point is. So mm. we are not doing much in terms of revenue, 12.5% of tax to GDP is relatively low. We are lower middle income. Mm. We should be doing 19 to 20 percent. Okay. So, so the loopholes in the system must be closed. We must find innovative ways of raising revenue. Mm. Secondly, the issue about expenditure. Mm. So you talk about interest payment, the question exactly. you ask. And we the have, we, we of have the public not, debt. We have not been prudent with expenditure. Yep. And I was happy the chairman of the finance committee, proud to the budget, raised this issue. Mm. We need to close the wastage in the system. Mm. And that must start from the central government. Definitely. If we need to uh, exactly. see and, our and, way and forward. And these are very critical we, points. Mm. So if, if you have all these brilliant projects like the U Start, the Ghana Cares of Batampa project, and what have you, mm. where is the money or the funding to finance these projects? These projects. If you are not making money. Yeah. Because if you look at the fiscal gap or the financing gap, it is very huge. Mm -hmm. yeah. The IMF fiscal monitor will tell you it's about 14.5%. The government will say no. Mm. Other organizations like Fitch Moody's would also uh, peg it at a higher rate, about 12, 13 percent. Mm. So it tells you that there is a major problem. Mm. And I'm happy the central uh, bank had consistently spoken about that. Mm. So drastic action is Needs. necessary. That is why, for me, I'm for the E levy, mm. but the rate must be reduced. Okay. And we must also look at uh, pushing it to cover. Other, other payment uh, uh, platforms and not necessarily mobile money. So, mm. if the rate comes to one percent or below one percent, mm. that would be uh, uh, good because we need money. Well, and that's one something. One way of getting money is through the electronic transaction. That's something we are looking forward to seeing. As the minister promises us that it's going to continue negotiation with the minority to uh, reach consensus. Charles Nixon Yaboa is editor with Joy Business. Also this afternoon. Uh, some drivers in Ashaman and Kaswa remain on strike despite uh, the uh, uh, calling of their leaders to call off the strike. And also we know there's a meeting this afternoon at the presidency to meet their leaders to uh, find a solution to this problem. We'll bring you details of all of that shortly on the polls.